Welcome to the REI Foundation Podcast, where we cover all the steps and strategies to make your real estate dreams a reality. Now your hosts, Jason and Peely. Well, hello again, and welcome to another edition of the Real Estate Investing Foundation Podcast with Jason and Peely. Today, you are just stuck with Jason as Peely is out there doing everything real estate and taking care of the three kiddos, but we are super excited for today's show. We are welcome to the show, Jake Stenziano. Jake, welcome. Hey, man. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for joining us. And if you don't know Jake, you have heard our other shows, and I'm sure you've heard them both on various other podcasts. Uh, Jake is one of the partners along with uh, Gino Barbaro of Jake and Gino, and also their 12 or 13 other businesses that all align with their vertically integrated process of buying apartment buildings. So Jake is an Amazon number one best-selling author, owns 900 multifamily units. We've mentioned co-founder of Jake and Gino LLC and the founder of Rand Property Management. And that's not all, but Jake, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being on with us. That's awesome, man. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Good. So a little about it. I know your story, so I'm not going to jump in there, but for others who somehow have missed the two of your growth, how did you get started in real estate? Uh, I, I got started actually, uh, Let's see. I was, it was probably, I first got the bug going back towards about 2010. I was a uh, pharmaceutical rep and I had a doctor that was the last doctor in uh, the area that I was calling on in New York that still had his own private practice. Uh, all the practices were getting bought up by these big groups, uh, but he retained his autonomy and his freedom to continue doing his own private practice because he didn't really need the money that he was making as a doctor because he had real estate holdings all up and down the East Coast. So he saw that I was a, a very much a, uh, a go-getter uh, as I learned to become a go-giver later in life. Uh, but he, he basically kind of took me under his wing and said, you know, go get a duplex. You know, I, I, when I first came out of medical school, we house hacked and uh, it was probably the best advice that I never took, but he kind of instilled that bug in me where you need to be in control of your future and you need to be in control of your destiny because you can see what's going on with all the other medical groups in the area. All these guys are lo losing the control and then losing their autonomy and they're basically being dictated to by the corporate whip. So that, that really kind of burned an impression on my brain. So that was, that was sort of the first step. Uh, the next step was, you know, I kind of got into the richest man in Babylon and that started that, that whole kind of thought process and understanding. Uh, getting towards uh, 2011, I, I was looking around and I'm seeing like my partner Gino is paying $25,000 a year in property taxes. We're getting clobbered over the head with state income taxes in New York. So the first move for me, I was just sitting there thinking, this is crazy. I do not want to be a part of this. This is too much. There's got to be a better way. So I literally started an Excel spreadsheet and I looked for a few things. I looked for very low property taxes and I looked for no state income tax and I wanted to be in a more business friendly environment. I was able to take a lateral transfer with the pharmaceutical company and the two that I really honed in on was, was Northern Florida and, and Eastern Tennessee. The, the, the simplest reason we landed in, in Tennessee was it was a job opening. I was able to take a lateral transfer to. Uh, being from New York, the manager there was actually from Jersey. So he was kind of accepting of me and he, he, he kind of got it because I tell this to people and some people are like, they don't really, they just don't comprehend, you know, the, the whole idea that you don't want to be, you know, had your basically the thumb pressed down on you by the government. And, and I was looking for, you know, to put myself in the best position. I mean, it, it created, you know, an instant instantaneous raise for me by literally just moving. And, and the cost of living in East Tennessee is great. So that was, that was the first big step. And it also put me in an environment where it was almost, you got to sink or swim now. I was out on an island by myself. My wife hadn't moved with me yet because she was finishing up uh, school at the time. So it was kind of, I'm, I'm here, now what? So literally, I'm driving around, kicking down doors of these doctor's offices. I was in a vaccine division at the time. And I just was crushing the audiobooks. I was listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger's audiobook, which was basically like, you just got to think big and go out and do it. And then I, I listened to Steve Jobs' book. And at the same time, uh, Gino and I were looking at multifamily properties. This was you know, coming off the back of the, the huge crash. And I just wanted yield. I didn't really know anything about real estate, but I wanted something that was you know, tangible, something that I could touch that was going to produce yield. Little did I know after you know, two years of getting pushed around, everyone was telling us we were crazy. We finally got into a deal. And all I wanted was the yield. That was it. 
And then all these things started coming out of the woodwork, the, the, the cost segregation, the, the savings. We started a property management company and, and we started learning about what refi and roll was and, and, and on and on and on. And all these benefits of, of being an actual business owner just smacked me in the face because when I was in the corporate job, uh, I was really, there was a, a basically a ceiling put in place and it was getting extremely regulated and, and it just, it, it wasn't doing it for me anymore. I loved it when I first got in, but then the regulations came down from the Affordable Care Act and it, and it just, you, you, everything was getting basically dried up there. So, you know, the real estate basically imposed its will over a two year period, pushed the, the, the pharmaceutical business out of the way and, and I was off to the races. But it was, that, that's a quick sort of overview, but it was a, you know, a long time just to get that first deal. I mean, we bought a, a, a shitty little 25 unit apartment complex on our first deal and it took us two years to get it because we didn't have any credibility. Brokers said we were crazy because we were basing offers that were based on actuals and they didn't want to see that. And, and so it was, it was an uphill battle and it was those struggles that everyone goes through when they're trying to get in the game because they don't have credibility. Brokers don't take them seriously and the market's even hotter now. So I feel everyone's pain out there who's trying to break through and get into the game at this point. The best advice I can give is, Keep your head down, keep going. Something will break through if you keep pushing. And, and a lot of times, right before you get that big break, it gets, it gets even harder. You know, I remember specific times where I was like, I was this close and it just, it, everything seemed to get that much harder and, and to pull through. So you, you just got to keep pushing. I know it's very cliche, but I, I truly believe that. So I, I'm gonna, we covered so much ground. And I appreciate that. And everybody listening, you have your working orders. You can almost just jump off the podcast right now because I'm, I'm psyched up, ready to go. I want to go find some deals. But for someone out there, you, you focus so much on mindset. And it, it, it may yes. seem scary that you, you jumped in there and you go from pharmace pharmaceutical uh, sales into buying a 25-unit apartment building. And you call it a shitty apartment building. That may be so scary because what people – focus on is I want to get into real estate. I, I got to find my first flip or my full, first wholesale. And maybe I, I'll think about, I don't even know what multifamily is, but maybe down the road, maybe I'll buy a duplex. How did you guys get that mindset ready from day one that I'm not going to focus on this. I'm going to focus on yield, which is another concept that people don't focus on originally. And I'm just going to go into buying an apartment building. Why did that direction come up from the start? Well, I, I knew multifamily was where I wanted to be. So that was very clear. So I thought everything else was transactional based. I was looking to, to you know, really create wealth. So, so realistically for us, it was the only place that I wanted to be. I did not want to be in a transactional game. Uh, we were really looking to create wealth and, and that's you know, where we really landed on multifamily. We got 10% owner financing on our first deal. To me, the scary thing would have been staying in my current role because there was literally layoffs for about seven years in a row. And they would, they would tell you, go home, sit by your phone. We'll give you a call and let you know if you're going to have your job the next, the next day. And that happened for something like seven years in a row. So for me, you know, getting into something that was you know, actually that I was going to be able to create a, a, a career out of and, and, and create businesses from, that was easy. Yes, I, I, could, I could see where you're coming from. It sounded scary. We started managing it ourselves. But, uh, you know, the alternative was eventually I was going to get laid off. So I don't figure this out. I'm going to be without a job anyways. Wow. And so you, you think about seven years of avoiding layoffs. Anything past that is probably safer than just sitting there waiting for the phone to ring and just almost being on the chopping block. Super nerve wracking, man. It was awful. Yeah. Now, if you think about sure. today, to fast forward where you are today, what, do you, what are you typically telling people you do today with so many different business operations going on? You know, I don't know what I'm telling people I do today, really. Uh, you know, we were really excited about the syndication business. Uh, it's something new. We've, we've launched company Ram Partners. Uh, so we really enjoy that. We're scaling that business out, out now. Uh, we're continuing to scale our education business, uh, Jake and Gino. Uh, the investment side for our personal assets, we have, you know, one syndication going on right now. We have one 115-unit, uh, uh, it's actually 145-unit building complex that we're buying now just in-house for ourselves. So it's, you know, we have those things going on. We have a, a charitable organization that we founded this year, Rank Cares, and we're, uh, we're actually in the process of starting a, uh, a brokerage business for um, financing 
so that when, while our students come through, they, they're really you know, able to get a turnkey system in place where we're able to help them place debt on their, on, on their acquisitions as well. So we have, a, we have a whole lot of things going. I mean, realistically, I, I'm, I'm focused on working with the, you know, we have, you know, essentially people in, if you want to call them, you know, vice presidents, whatever, we have people that are leading up these different organizations. And a big part of what I do every day is working with them on, on business development and, and the growth side and the acquisitions of our business. So when you're growing so many different business sectors, let's pick one of them. Let's pick maybe the property management side. What, what has been a challenge with growing that business out to really match with all the acquisitions you've had over the last five, six years? Sure. So just growing so many different business sectors at one time, let's pick property management. What, what has been one of the challenges of growing out a full service property management business while you're growing your multifamily platform? Really, really interesting question because we focus on buy right, manage right, and finance right. And when you buy the property, that's done. You know, you, you got to buy it on, on what you believe are the actuals and, and make sure you're hitting your parameters. That's gone. When you finance it, we're looking at long-term debt, okay? So that's off the table. What's left? What, what levers can you pull to improve the performance of your property? It all comes back to the management. And, and you know, for us, that was, that was a key component we wanted control there. And it really came back to getting systems in place and getting really good people. And we actually believe from a strategy, a business strategy perspective, that this is our blue ocean. I truly believe that if we can conquer the customer service component and become a Chick-fil-A type customer service, we will have created a blue ocean where we're not competing with people. I do believe that all the properties we've taken over have had a lack of customer service. People were not treated correctly. So our strategy from here going forward, we're, we're continually building out our customer service uh, platform. We have uh, you know, a, a service we use right now, which is, you know, is online where people can go and get training. But we also have a Rand Way training component of it where we're building out further levels of, of customer service for our, our maintenance techs and our in-house folks. And if we can nail that and get that right, I think we're going to be unstoppable because, you know, we've had people come on board that have had prior property management experience before and they haven't worked out really well because we're not looking for someone that necessarily has prior property management experience. We're looking for people that are rock stars at customer service. And we found them actually by, by getting folks from higher end restaurants that have been maybe, you know, like a Ruth Chris, where they have a really good training program in place because they understand the hustle. They understand the customer service because they've already been trained at a high level from a corporation. And we just need people to have a positive attitude and, and a good, you know, level of ethics and morals. We can teach them the rest. And that's why we're working on our systems and our training. Because if you can bring the attitude and ethics, we can pull the rest through for you. Huh, that, I love that, it. That, is, that is built in here. Yeah. A lot of that, if you're going to, if it, you know, our, our regional gets so upset if, you know, one of our folks, some, some comes in the office and they don't get up to greet them, right? It's, it's that kind of stuff that is going to really make the difference, how you're answering the phone and, and a lot of this. So that's the stuff we're working at really hard on now. And I think over the next five years, if we can really master that, we'll have created a blue ocean for ourselves. Uh, literally was going to Chick-fil-A the other day and you could not get in the parking lot at lunch. It was so backed up. McDonald's doesn't have that problem. Burger King doesn't have that problem. The food's good. It's very consistent, but they have a very high level of customer service in an area where typically people don't get that. And that's what we're striving to become. I think the challenges are always in the beginning, not understanding systems, you know, getting people on board because you feel like, oh, I can't hire some really good talent because we're, we're small, this, that, and the other thing. And now as we're, you know, we have 30 some employees on the, on the property management side, which is, which is nice and everything. But I think if, as we grow to 50 to 100, getting these, these further customer service systems in place, is, it's going to be what really propels us to the next level. Uh, but man, we got kicked and punched every step of the way from people stealing to, to just people with poor ethics and, and not the right attitude. And that's why for us, all those issues really were, they were, they were centered around the people. We didn't necessarily have the correct systems in place in the beginning. That's why we're working so hard. So we're fulfilling that on our end. But, but when it comes down to though, is getting the people with the right attitude and the right ethics that are going to be a mesh for our systems. And then the sky's the limit. Dude, we touched on so many different spots. So I'm going to jump back to a couple questions here. And you've grown this great hiring platform for anybody growing their business. Go back and listen to what Jake talked about in terms of hiring. Cause there can be nothing more important that can ruin your business than when you're just starting out hiring the wrong people and sticking with them too long. So he talked yeah. about 
how to find those good employees. Who, what was your first? You have hire? to be willing to fire too. That's yeah. that's something like, and, and Gino always goes back to that where he struggled at the restaurant because he just kept people around, but they weren't the they weren't the right fit. One of the, and I'm going to recommend this to everybody that we we run our best, uh, all of our systems based on EOS. It's an entrepreneurial operating system. There's a book Traction by Gino Wickman. Uh, it has a you know there's a there's a there's a, a VTO a Vision Traction organizer that helps get all your thoughts and your goals down on paper. And then there's a, a something they call a weekly L10. It's a level 10 meeting. And I have a touch base with every one of our managers alongside our regional every week. We'll review this level 10 meeting. Uh, we're self implementers. We, we simply use Google Docs so everybody can see it real time as we're having our meetings. But it's, it's these types of touch points and, and systems that gets everybody on the same page and, and, and moving forward, uh, you know, kind of to the same rhythm. I'm sorry, you, you had a question there that you asked. Yeah. Me. So your first hire, yeah. when you guys were going on your platform, and yeah. when did you know you needed that hire? Yeah, our, our first hire actually turned out to be a, a heroin addict, um, so that didn't that didn't work out too well. <laughs> and 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 it literally, when I say we got punched, you know, a million different ways, um, it was it was a it was a recommendation from someone that I knew. They said, "Oh, this guy's really good." This, that, and the other thing. And and literally, I talk about the I'm a mentality. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do everything. I was literally going to the first property, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Mondays, doing showings, you know, helping out cutting the grass, whatever it was, we we're going to make it happen. Didn't care. But even though I was doing it, you know, totally idiotically, I don't recommend anyone doing that. I'm glad because we learned every, you know, level of the business from the, from the ground up. But uh, so it was okay, we needed basic maintenance support. So we had a gentleman and then sometimes he would help show additional units to people for the 25 unit complex. Um, I would show up Saturday mornings and you know, he had a, uh, a a unit that he would he was discounted rent on on the property. I would knock on the thing, you know, hey, how's it going? Let's you know talk and strategize a little bit. Could never get the guy up the first couple of times, and I thought, man, he must have a wicked hangover or something. Yeah. And and I guess that uh, heroin has even a more effect on on preventing you from waking up after a, a night of that. Uh, and, and that's when I was first introduced to this whole op opioid epidemic. You know, we were. We were dealing with a lot of residents on the, on the first property that had issues with that. And I think there was probably some crossover between that maintenance technician and, and the residents. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, had a hard time with that. I mean, you know, I, I, I try to keep everything in here for the folks on YouTube and, and, and you know, in the mindset as positive as, po as, as you know, just as, as possible. Because when you start to go back and relive this, those are some tough times. I mean, you're getting kicked around and, and there's just some really, you know, rough things. So now, now it's, I really just follow the Ray Dalio model that it's another one of those. We put a process in place to deal with it and then we're moving on and then we're not allowing it to take up our, our positive mind space uh, and, and just trying to be as, as decisive as possible. So when something happens, you haven't been there before, quickly don't avoid it because if you avoid it, it'll take up more and more space in your head and it'll, it'll just pull you down. Address it head on as quickly as possible. Put a plan in place. It may not be the right plan, but as the thing resolves itself, you will be able to then go back, review it, have a proper system in place to deal with it, and then it's never going to be one of those major issues again because you've been there, you've dealt with it, you have a process for it, and you're moving on to the next one. It's another one of those. I think that was the like the golden nugget of that principles book. I mean, it was it was beautiful. I love principles, but I think that was one of the, the most impactful things that it was just a realization. Everything is going to be another one of those. It's going to happen again if you don't if you don't review it after the fact and put a process or a system in place to deal with it, it's going to continue being an issue. And don't delay when something comes up and it's making you queasy, it's making your gut feel a little weird, hit that shit head on, move on to the next thing. I love that. And you know, one of my favorite things about the Jake and Gino process, and you guys introduced to me a lot of components is that when, as a multifamily operator, lots of times the focus is solely on what can we do to get rent up on people? You know, how are we going to get this rent up on people? How are we going to do this? And that's, always the thing that of course it's a great option but there's so many different avenues you can take and what you have introduced and and out there is there's between re revenue and expenses there's so many different ways that you can make a better property without dipping into the tenant's pocket you think you could jump onto a couple of uh ideas or a couple strategies that you use to improve the property that can ultimately make the property more efficient from uh one an economic standpoint and two from an, uh, an operational standpoint yeah, I mean, we, we've done all the typical things that folks do. I think one of the, the big things for us in Knoxville is that it's such a dog-friendly community that you can go into Home Depot, you go into a lot of restaurants, and, and pets are welcome. So we've, you know, one, taken over properties that were not uh, pet-friendly before, and we've actually turned them pet-friendly. And, you know, pets, pets pay rent too. So there's an economic side to it, but there's also, hey, this is an apartment home. 
So we look for apartments that have washer dryer hookups. We, we, we make them pet friendly. A lot of times we had dog parks and the like. So it's, it's creating the, the amenities that your customers want. And our customers, many times, they're really looking for washer dryer hookups. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll add those in. And a lot of times they want to bring, you know, their extended family, which is their pets into the property. And we need to find a way to make that work. So through our fee structure and, and you know, different things, we're able to make it work from a financial model and also make it work for, for the customers as they, as they want to bring these in. So I think for us, based on, you know, literally our area that we operate in, that's, that's a huge piece. So how should I know if that would work in my property? before just putting it in there and hoping. Yeah, cuz cuz the flip side to it is there's properties that are that are that do not allow pets and that's actually why people rent. So I think it's it's understanding your customers wants and needs. And so that's that could be through a survey, that could be what the area typically, you know, has been known for. Um, we just have, you know, fortunately, you know, we have thousands of folks that rent from us where we we've got enough feedback so we know this is sort of what we've known for. This is what we've, we've, we've done well and, and that works for us. So that's been, you know, simply our model uh, through just trial and error and pivoting and, and whatnot. So I think it's, you know, it's just getting to know your customers. Now, if, if you're looking at your business now growing out, let's talk about Rand Cares. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity that I know is coming up, especially with Thanksgiving on our horizon. What is Rand Cares? And talk to us a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah, so our, our, a lot of our employees get really passionate about all the different businesses that we're doing. We allow our employees to reinvest in our deals. So if, if you work for Ramp Property Management, if you work for Jake and Gino, you can reinvest in the deals. So there's a very you know youthful spirit, entrepreneurial spirit within all of our organizations. And we were getting pushed because we're doing all these different things and like, guys, we got to give back. And so we, we, we kind of had this deal where like, okay, Thanksgiving's coming up. I'm like, we're going to feed the kids. We're not feeding the adults. We're going to feed the kids. The adults had their chance. We're going directly after the kids. So, you know, we, uh, you, you were, you know, you were there at our, at the multifamily mastery live. Uh, we were talking about a little bit and there was actually uh, one of the attendees said, I help corporations implement these things. So as we were already doing it, that person worked with one of the folks on our team uh, to even further accelerate the process. We, we, we partnered with the group second harvest food bank of 10, to see. Uh, 96 cents on every dollar actually goes directly to feeding feeding the kids. And in the last two weeks, uh, I don't think it's been two weeks yet, we've raised over 6,500 meals for Thanksgiving coming up. So if folks are interested, uh, you can go to jakeandgino.com, you can click on food drive, and uh, you, know, you can actually donate. Every one of our offices has donations set up in it right now. They get weighed, so we're actually competing from an office to office standpoint right now. So we're going to do ni- uh, something nice for the folks that win that. But it, it's just fun. I mean, we put it together extremely quickly um, and, and we're just we're just blasting it out I expect we're gonna feed anywhere between 10 to 15 thousand kids this Thanksgiving so super rewarding and uh, you know for the first year I think we're really kicking ass and it's, it's just uh, yeah That's part awesome. of part of the process right? I love it thank you for yeah. that and just a few more questions before we let you go here if we're looking at now the next couple of years of, of the Jake and Gino and Rand uh, Rand businesses What's next? What's going to be the drive over this? Are you going to look to continue buying multifamily? Are you going to look to continue uh, building up the platforms? What's on the horizon? Yeah. So, so internally, I, I think that we're, we're, we're sort of going as wide as we want to go right now, meaning that we have certain businesses in place that all feed each other and they're, and they're all just working towards the same cause of serving the customer and, and getting more multifamily acquisitions. So we're not going to, we're, we're going to try to prevent from going any wider, meaning starting new businesses. We, we have a good foundation in place now, and now it's just kind of stacking, stacking the bricks uh, and getting into, like I said, we, we have a acquisition right now underway that we're buying in house. We have a syndication that we're doing. I think we're going to get much broader into the syndication uh, over the next few years because we've, we've had a really good response from our investors. Uh, I think there, it's going to allow us to go very big and we have such a solid foundation in place and we've proven our model, uh, you know, since you know getting into this uh, in, in 2012 that uh, I think the, uh, the the future is very bright and super excited about you know just uh, being able to do what I love every day so that that's that's the greatest thing from going from not knowing if I was going to have a job every day to you know being so freaking engaged and loving what I'm doing and growing something uh, that uh, you know feeling very blessed so, so if there's someone sitting there today that's feeling that, that, that they're just not fulfilled with what they're doing and they want to get into real estate. We talk so much about mind, mindset for people listening. You've seen how much you can do when you put your mind to it. What would be one actual step you can give a real estate investor or someone who wants to get started today? What should be one actual step they should take right now? 
I'm just going to spit off a few things because the thing that that's really hit me and I've had an epiphany over the last few months is that that mindset, attitude and self-awareness, are, they got to be 90% of the game. Like regardless of all this, if, if and it's, just, it's so cliche, but if you, if you don't believe you can do it and, and you're not going to even try, then you're already, you're already done. Okay. And, and being self-aware of how you're impacting others, you know, by your actions. I think that's been a, a big realization for me uh, over the last few months to do something, get started, start analyzing deals. It's okay to start with a 25 unit deal. You've seen, you know, we're, we're going to be, I don't know, 1200 units or something like this by December, right? We started with a 25 unit deal in, and we closed, I think in February, 2013. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to take 20 years to build this up. I was retired within three years. I was able to leave my job. I didn't have to do anything else. I was financially set within three years of kicking down doors. So the key is to get started. People think it's this pie in the sky. Oh, the market's too hot. I can't do it. You have to just get started and keep pushing. If you don't quit and you keep Every day, actionable steps towards it, right? What is it, you know, here's the goal. I want to own 50 units. Reverse engineer that. I'm still on paper every day. I'm writing my goals down on paper and I'm taking the bigger goals up top and I'm breaking them down into actionable steps that I can get done every day. Something that I can eat, right? I don't know that it's any, it's, it's much more complicated. I think people, we were talking before the show, you're saying that, you know, people get really freaked out. Well, how am I going to collect rent? How am I going to do this? Just start and figure it out as you go. Like it's not just because you don't know it, you're going to figure it out. A lot of this stuff is common sense. Multifamily is not rocket science. I've said it a million times. You just got to get started, get some st- type of education. I really believe that education times action equals results in this game. Get some type of education, whether you're listening to these podcasts or whatever, get started, start analyzing deals. If you have to start small, that's fine. You can scale up quickly, but get going, do something, you know, call a broker, analyze a deal that if you don't do that stuff, nothing will happen. The most important thing you can do is network with brokers, analyze deal and put in offers. That's period. Do you have a morning routine and what is it? And I know you do. It's a fucking awesome morning routine, man. I love it. So, you know, and and the funny thing was that we had so many of these guys on like that, that do the miracle morning. We had the miracle morning guy on the show uh, a, a few weeks ago. And I think it just from the podcast, hearing these different things that we've been on the show that I picked it up over the years. But yeah, I'm usually up, you know, typically 5.30 to 6, just depending on you know, how, how late the night went before. Um, big, in, big into the meditating right now. Uh, Dylan, who's running our uh, investor relations and syndication, has a, uh, a yoga guy coming in, uh, a yoga guy, a, a meditation guy coming in. Uh, for TM because I've been doing Headspace for quite a while and I absolutely love it. So we got like this uh, this TM meditation guru uh, coming in for the office in a few weeks. So I'm really excited about that. But uh, yeah, I'm getting up. I'm hitting the meditation every morning. I am uh, typically doing brain games as well. I don't know if you know it, but the, these different like these uh, these games that are promote uh, the brain elasticity. So working on that. Uh, typically, been going through three different Audible books in the morning for you know ten minutes or so, bouncing different things you know around on that. Um, making sure that everything is is aligned with my week. Um, usually trying to hit some some sort of social media in the morning because that's really important. Uh, getting my stretch on. Get, getting you know getting old, man. I got to keep that that back worked out. And then, um, it, depending, it doesn't necessarily happen first thing, but I try to hit it. I got a gym downstairs, so I go, you know, try to hit that around 10. Uh, and then just, you know, going from there, reviewing, reviewing my goals, you know, like a, a few of the things we talked about. Uh, every day, I'm, I'm writing down that, you know, to, to create that customer service and that Chick-fil-A of apartments, because I do believe that's our, you know, the blue ocean, writing down some financial goals. And it's funny, I'm looking at it and literally reading it off right now. And, uh, and we have a small construction crew and we're implementing a even further level of, you know, exterior uh, improvements and sort of curb appeal. And I'm really working hard to pull that through Q1 of next year. So just some things that I want to keep, you know, burned in that I'm not going to let slip. Um, it's, it's kind of it, man. I got my workout routines at the bottom. But, you know, you got to be organized, guys. I'm telling you, write this down. I've been using this. I used, to, I used to use this to call it my yellow brick road back in the day so I'd know where I was going to hit the different doctors. And it kind of just morphed. I didn't want to have to think, you know. So I just would put it down at the beginning of the week, and then it morphed into my coach's sheet. So That's ridiculously great. That's great. Thank you. Would you have some words you live by? Some words I live by? Sure. Um, make it happen, man. Love it. <laughs> That's what Love we're it. doing every day. Good. You heard it here. 
simple, straightforward, and everybody gets it. So Jake, we really appreciate your time today. You gave us so much from just training on people, from following restaurants, uh, very uh, high-end restaurants that have a training program, to all the different platforms you have, from Jake and Gino to Rand Partners to Rand Cares, which for the, everybody listening today, go on the website. I'll have the link in there, jakeandgino.com, uh, I believe, backslash Rand Cares, but we'll have the link in there to listening and surrounding yourself with the right knowledge, listening to audio books like Arnold Schwarzenegger to set your mindset right, focusing on what you want, which in Jake's basically mindset, he wanted to have stability. He was facing layoffs every day and wanted to go after yield so he could have stability to building out within three years of being financially stable to the ability that he could retire. But when you love what you do, he's in there today, making it happen, building a team, building the, the Chick-fil-A of multifamily business. So Jake, thank you so much for your time today. For listeners beyond the Rand Cares, how much can someone check out what, more, what you guys are doing out there? Yeah, I mean, we're out there, right? So you can go on jakeandgino.com. You, you can click on that. You can go to randpartnersllc.com. Check out the stuff we're doing with the syndication. So I don't think it's hard to find us. We're, we're pretty much out there everywhere. The G-Dad's doing a good job with the social media, so. There is. Well, Jake, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate your time. We'll talk to you shortly. Thanks, Jason. Bye now. Thanks for tuning into the REI Foundation Podcast. Check back next time for more awesome tips and strategies to launch your new you in real estate.